Good morning, noon, evening, or night, depending when you're watching this video. My name is Air Legend, and welcome back to World of Tanks and the greatest of games, featuring some very good games with some very exceptional moments. And the theme of this video, as you might saw, is missions. Yes, I am now playing in my M60, and I'm going to do both medium tank mission 15 as well as the alliance 15 for the chimera and what other thing to do it in the m60 because this tier 10 american medium tank has become one of my favorites because it had such a good gun handling it's quite a glass cannon furthermore it's quite similar to the leopard one with slightly less alpha damage but a better overall TPM and also with a bit more armor although it's nothing to brag about you can still bounce the occasional shot so in order to get these two missions it's one of the harder ones for the T-55A 2500 damage to enemy tank destroyers and Alliance 15 is going to be six and a half thousand damage so how can we achieve these numbers well first of all as always we are taking a very strong first position in order to catch out some pushing uh, enemy medium tanks but when those are destroyed i quickly look around for other flanking possibilities although it is kind of hard to push further on this map since it's quite open and the amount of tank destroyers in the enemy team well puts still a lot of pressure if you go further especially if you're reaching the a line cannot really make a move further without getting quite punished by tank destroyers so i'm relocating to the middle of the map in order to have some other angles for flanking fire i almost get punished for it by the tvp luckily like i said before this tank can occasionally bounce or deflect some shells so a bit of luck right here instead of going further forward towards the a line like the super conqueror i am now having several side shots at enemy tanks so probably a blind shot right there it's going to be a hit on the Panzer E100 and now the WZ 1115A is also getting a bit pummeled. And you see just the amazing gun handling of this tank making it so much more easier. And even though I'm getting some lower worlds, it's still decent amount of damage per shot that I do for this reload. And now the golden opportunity is arriving because i can take the very center of the map on contestant and the only thing i need to do is a bit careful not to push too far in order not to get spotted but i get so many side shot possibilities from this position so i'm taking full advantage of it so from this position it is pretty much just looking around and seeing which enemy tank is the easiest to hit and either one of the enemy tanks is already at a one shot and just chip away their hit points shot by shot not continuously firing because a lot of the enemy tanks are still unspotted or behind some solid cover or so much in cover that i only can hit pixel snipe which i cannot do because rng even though with this amazing gun it's still not the most accurate so as the amount of enemy tanks are dwindling i am making my way further and further forward but i also keep an eye out of solid cover because right there the enemy grill could still have hit me but luckily i keep in account that i have this rock formation right here that i can fall behind so a little bit too overconfident right here trying to get a shot on the grill there was another unspotted Jagdpanzer e100 but like i said somehow i don't also do not know why i bounced that shot being very lucky right there and that definitely you cannot do in a leopard one 
But now that I know where the only threat to my position is at, and he's already dead, I can move away even further. So now I am actually moving quite a bit in the open, but I know that the enemies are not focusing me, the ones that are at their own cap. So I can easily take out this T. 110e3 and now I'm already driving away from the T110e3 to go as soon as possible towards the next target because I know that I don't get fired at by the T110e3 and if I miss my shot my team is pretty much finishing him off quite quickly because he was already a one shot with quite low amount of HP and in the end it's just a quick clean up trying to get as many shots in as possible once again now against the T110E4 already driving away being very confident that my gun handling will allow these shells to hit and penetrate so I'm already moving away as I'm still focusing the enemy tank that I am leaving behind and now getting some final shots off towards the Death Star, trying to up my damage even more. And will this be enough? 5900 damage on the counter. You need 6500 in order to achieve this mission, but I still had some blind shots. And with these couple of extra blind shots, I did achieve 6500 damage completing alliance mission 15 for the chimera and also completing the medium tank 15 for the t55a achieving that mission even with honors so alongside the completion of this mission of course this was an ace tanker alongside with a high caliber and a top gun and almost a redly walters but unfortunately the Death Star got kill stealed away from me. But still, this amount of damage, and alongside with 7 kills, allows me to get 1262 base experience on tier 10, which is very nice. And without firing too many gold shells and not receiving that much damage myself, I was able to get a nice profit out of it, either with or without premium. So in this game, it was once again, it's so important. Location, location, location. Locating yourself at a strong initial position to catch out pushing enemy tanks who want to get to their own strong location is allowing you to already get some early damage off most of the time in a safe position where you don't get damaged yourself and it's just those kinds of free damage are the best damage of the game to be honest getting already 1500 damage without receiving any hit myself and after that flank was won it was relocating towards a more central position in order to get shots side shots on the tanks on the same flank and to see if there are other possibilities on other flanks where I could hit some enemy tanks. And this central position is really a golden opportunity, especially in this kind of open map, because you have so many targets you might get fire at who might just throw a little bit too far into the open, away from solid cover, and you can really amp up your damage that way. But keep in mind that this kind of position can be very vulnerable if you get spotted. Enemy tanks can also shoot you back from multiple angles. But luckily we kept our head cool and always have some cover nearby that if we were spotted, we couldn't get hit. Except for that one shot of the Japan CE-100, which was a lucky bounce. But also it was recognizing when it was safe to rush in towards the T110E3, realizing that all of the other enemy tanks were occupied with the other, with my teammates. And also when the T110E3 was one shot, I was already moving away going towards the next target partially because i was so confident in my gun handling and 
otherwise if I missed the T1 T3 wasn't aiming at me it was occupied with my team once again and if I missed my team could finish him off quite quickly and the same happened with the T1 T4 as well so moving up towards the next battle it is Burago Hunter RDJ in his concept 1B going to show us how quickly you can get kills in this game in Westfield having a hold down tank is amazing on this flank and you're going to see exactly how you can amp up both your damage and your kills this way so as he crushes the rich Burago is focusing the visible targets first instead of the most nearest targets this is quite a obvious strategy to do but I see sometimes that people having too much of a tunnel vision on the tank that is closest to them not realizing that there are still some camping tanks behind them Burago had quite the advantage since the enemy backline was already spotted but even if they weren't spotted you should still take into account that there are enemy tanks right there because it's such a popular spot so from this position it is so easy to ramp up some damage showing as little of yourself as possible and getting multiple shots in into the enemy tanks and when the Skoda T56 is spotted in the middle, Burago really does a good thing by taking a good look around and check if he is still covered from the side. Because as an American heavy tank, you might be quite strong frontally, but your side and rear are made out of paper. The Concept 1B also has very nice statistics on the gun handling. So you can easily snapshot at these kinds of ranges so Burago is utilizing the full potential of it and has already got two kills and there is barely two minutes gone into this game and after vanquishing most of the enemy tanks here the team of Burago is making their way further and further forward so he joins in into the party rushing forwards and going for the rank kill right here because he was still a little bit on the reload and he's just going absolutely berserk going in alongside with his team no time to be careful right here and once again he wants to go on for the ram but got a little bit blocked by the AMX but no worries he was already reloaded already having four kills right now within two and a half minutes after that he catches the Lynx out and also the Char Future which he quickly finishes off already 6 kills within 3 minutes then he spots the A phase 1 but instead goes for the RT which is a good choice if you want to pick up kills because an RT is way easier to destroy and finally against A phase 1 he's switching towards heat and actually waits until he is a one shot getting 8 kills in this 3 minute and 25 second match. So an insane amount of kills in such short amount of time. A great thing also to have for several missions, especially some of the Object 279E mission which I'm currently doing, which in some cases a lot of kills makes some of these missions way more easier. So how does this happen? Well, again, amazing position and some lucky one shots in the beginning he could easily pick off. Circumstances were optimal, being a hold down tank on Westfield, not having too much competition of enemy hold down tanks on that flank also helped a lot. So really, if you recognize this, you can see the enemy team, A phase one, could still have been quite a challenger but he wasn't there so if you realize that the only thing standing in your way might be the t10 the type 4 heavy or the skoda but all of those tanks doesn't have that amazing gun depression so your position is pretty much 
uncontested right there. Would be something else if, uh, for example, an Emil 2 was on the enemy team. Also, when the team was absolutely obliterating that flank and only a few enemy tanks remain, moving in alongside with your team is also something very important. It's again something which sounds quite logical, but the amount of time that people are still hesitant, not wanting to take any shots of damage is something that you just have to shove out the window. Just move in, ramming if you are still on reload even, especially if you are playing a heavy tank, and just go with the flow and that way you might actually get some extra kills, which Burago did. And at the end, focusing down some easy kills and wait even for someone getting a one shot before firing your shell if you want to get those kills. And for the final battle, we are watching Urbelg in his KV-1 shielded, playing on Fisherman's Bay. So a KV-1 shielded, a tier 5 heavy tank, doesn't really do that much for missions, but it gives you an example what you can achieve when you are a top tier vehicle and some of the circumstances are so much in your favor that you will get great results out of it, which can be very helpful for a lot of missions. So making his way towards the city, he's encountering some first heavy tanks on that flank, but quite quickly they are retreating back to the corner. And since there are not a lot of enemies in the middle, Orbel takes a bit of a risk, moving more aggressively in the city, but he knows that his KV-1 shielded is quite the sturdy tank versus the other KV-1s on the same tier. So he fires some more shots in the enemy KV-1, but when he is angry such a way that he cannot penetrate anymore, he quickly decides to outflank further and see if he can fire at different angles. Once again, when you are at one flank and you cannot do any damage anymore, always keep an eye out if you can take another flank in order to get a different angle on your enemies in which you can penetrate them. So on this flank he immediately sets the enemy KV-1 on fire, but quickly redirects his fire towards the T-14, who is now a bigger threat, because he is focusing him and eventually he is also now rushing him. So Urbelt does an amazing play right here by just reversing back and lure the T-14 into the open, in which his team can also fire at him and he actually gets destroyed by one of his teammates. And with that T-14 out of the way, it is back going towards that one KV-1 that he has set on fire. Not really sure why he still doesn't notice Urbel right here, since he was set on fire by him. But Urbel shows a lot of capabilities against these enemy KV-1s, baiting a shot from the last enemy KV-1 and shooting him down because he knows he has the better reload. Now the whole city has been won by the team, but halfway through the open field, Orbel realizes that this is not the way to go. And after receiving a shot from the M10, he knows for sure that this is not the route to take. So he doesn't continue going towards the enemy base and goes another safer route through the middle, which is also a better position to defend his own base since the enemies have won the 1-2 line. So in the middle he can quickly dispose of these pressuring enemy tanks. Having many side shots on several of them allows him to really rack up some more damage. And slowly moving further up to the middle in order to take out that Cavalier, which was the last enemy tank who was still occupying this central location. And from here it is still taking the safest route the long way around in order 
to not get caught out into the middle since Orbel doesn't have that many HP left. And this took a lot of time before he reaches the position of the Wolverine, still got shot by the M10 once again, making him now a full of one shot, so he's extra careful. But time is ticking, so he does need to make a move on the enemy base. Little chance to catch the M10 by chasing him, so eventually he stands in the cap and the reason why this is on a well reasonably good timing in order to cross the open field is because the churchill one with his central position can spot the flanking m10 and that's exactly what happens nearing the end of the battle the m10 wants to flank through the middle but the churchill caught him out and like that he is disposed of so this game, although no mission achieved here, is showing how to play in a top tier heavy tank with a high risk, high reward gameplay. Moving to a aggressive position in the city, it is worth taking a few shots in order to get to those positions because he had a lot of opportunities right there. Flanking from three separate sub flanks and utilizing those in order to get side shots on the enemy tanks. And when the enemy tanks were noticing him, he focuses his attention at the most threatening enemy and also drove back back in the line of support fire of his team in order to get rid of the threat quicklier. And also don't drive mindlessly in the open, even though Urberg blocked quite a bit of shots going into the open like that really wasn't a good idea and he took a far better route with more cover which was safer and in which he could also defend his base better. So that was it for this video, hope you enjoyed it and hope you can achieve a lot of missions by looking at these replays and now knowing these kinds of tips and tricks which you can do in your own games. And as always, I will see you later.